What is up guys, we're back. Um, we've got more Megaleo mods. This video is going to be more of a let's get stuff done. And then there's going to be some videos to follow showing what we're actually doing in individual like how-tos, if you're into that type of thing. Uh, first job is going to be a stud conversion. That's these things. And basically what we're doing is replacing the wheel bolts, which you put the wheel on the hub and put the bolt in, with a stud with a nut on the end. Nice easy job, I think. Um, bit of Loctite, let's get to it. Uh, first job, car's up in the air and wheels off. Um, obviously I've took one wheel bolt out just to show you. But uh, just need to take all the wheel bolts out and then clean the threads out, thread that in, tighten it up. It's got a little hex attachment on the top there. Um, bit of Loctite on the thread. Give it about, I think I say an hour, I'll have to double check, uh, talk it up and everything, and um, that'll be done. Right, that's the front uh, wheel studs done. Uh, can't do the back yet, I need to let the Loctite set at the front before we uh, put the wheels back on. So what we're going to do, while we're waiting for that to happen, is have a look at the brake ducts. Um, all they do, bolt in place of the fog lights. So you take the fog light out, bolt that in where the fog light goes, and then you attach some duct in, which we have here. Try and route that round into the wheel well. And it clips to one of them, well, not clips, it jubilee, you know, worm clip onto the back of one of those. And then that goes through the uh, arch liner. It's a bit dark in here, so I do apologise. But into the arch liner, somewhere around here, uh, probably further down. To try and get a bit of airflow over the brakes, help cool them down. Let's have a look at that again. I'm going to uh, just sort of brief over it, and uh, then there'll be another video with a like a how I did it, how to. I have mentioned this on a previous video, but just in case you haven't seen one, um, removing the front bumper is very simple. You've got two fixings here, which are just little 10 mil screwy things. You've got in your arch liners just behind here, I'll see if I can show you. Yeah, a little tab that just bolts through. Uh, I end up cutting my original ones off and just replacing them with some little stainless hardware. The front of the arch liner screws into there, which you've got to remove to remove the arch liner to get to that anyway, so that shouldn't be an issue. Then under the front of the car, into like the under tray, you've got another two 10mm fixings. And then these stupid little plastic fixings, which don't do a great deal. And then the front bumper just lifts away. Right, the bumper's off. Um, put the arch liners back in. So you can see roughly, that's where the uh, duct will be. And then it's uh, straight onto the, uh, oh, falling over. Straight onto the arch liner. So we need to somehow get the hose from the fog light duct into here. Yeah. Probably ish. Um, not quite sure how we're going to do this, in all honesty. In there. You can't get them through that gap because of the bloody intercooler in the way. But there, you're not going to be far off being straight onto the tyre, I believe. So, what I might do, throw a wheel on and have a think. Right guys, it's the next day. Um, yesterday beat me a little bit, I'm not going to lie. 
The problem we've got with the Mark III Clio chassis, oops, is the fog light duct comes in there and it's gonna turn at such a sharp, sharp angle to get behind the arch liner in there. Um, what a lot of people do is just cut the arch liner out. It's only a track car, why have it? But I'd like to retain it. It does protect a lot of the inside of the uh, inside of the arch, especially with the fuse box. If I want to show you, the fuse box being there, the back of the arch liner straight onto it. Um, so what I have seen done is somebody 3D printed like a 90 degree bend. Uh, I've got nothing to show you, but uh, a 90 degree bend, so you literally just come off the back of the duct. It'll come off the back of the duct. There you go, through a hose under like a 90 degree bend onto the arch liner, um, which I don't have. So I've put the front of the car back together and called that one a loss. I'm going to come back to it. I've circled it. I'm going to come back to it. Uh, just not today. Touch wood. I've not had any brake, major brake issues in regards to heat. So, fingers crossed, we're going to be alright. But, I suppose that's on to the next job anyway. Um, on to the list. The next one's a roll cage, which is what we're going to be looking at today. Don't know how far we'll get with that, but we'll have a look at that. Um, fire extinguisher we can't do, because you've got to take the front seats out, and I've got to do that for the roll cage anyway. The rear wheel stood conversion we can do at the same time as putting the cage in because uh, back wheels have got to come off to get to the rear arches um, and then wheels which I'm excited for because I've had the tyres mounted this morning look at them beautiful um, rotor SS10s pretty much the same size as the stock wheels just a slightly better offset they're a 50mm 50, uh, 50 offset rather than a, a standard the 68 but I want a 20mm spacer so 48 so they should actually stick in the arch, two mil, which is not going to be noticeable, is it? But uh, yeah, all we need to do in regards to the roll cage then, first job is the front seats out and back end in the air. Uh, I don't know if we've got enough axle stands actually, so right, let's get to it. Car's in the air, can't see because I'm driving. Car's in the air, back wheels are off on a stack here. The plan is obviously to get the cage in. Sorry about the wind. Um, so this is where the cage wants to go. So we've got harness bars in the way, harnesses, seats, and a lot of carpets. Plus I went for the awkward option, which bolts to the rear wheel wells. So what I'm going to do now, remove the harness bars and harnesses, pull the seat sides, just a couple of bolts on each end of them, a couple of bolts on the seat get the seats and harnesses out and uh, assess because this car had a cage in it before so I want to see if it's something we could just bolt in or if I'm going to have to weld some plates in to uh, strengthen up where the cage can bolt to. And we are gutted as you can see seats and rails are out they're behind me here, along with the rear door cards. Um, seats are technically just four bolts if we go around here. These are technically just four bolts, but because of the access with the uh, seat rails and that, it's a bit of a pig to get out um, on this particular car. But uh, it's all stripped out. Uh, under the floor, in the corners, that's where the, uh, oh, from when I did my battery location, uh, that's where the cage is going to bolt. So, uh, looks good. One random little nut from I believe that might be where that was originally, uh, but anyway, um, just gonna pull the carpet back forward and try and wangle a cage which I've left in the garage out of the garage without writing my car off and in through that door. This is very badly thought out. Um, then obviously, it bolts the rear arches, so I will have to move the arch liner. Right, I've not been recording very well, so this is probably a terrible vlog. Um, but, very exciting news, and pardon the wind, it's freezing. Cage in. Uh, it's only in loose. I had to uh, give a mate a shout. 
because I obviously couldn't get it in myself, but it went in the driver's door. Um, I once said, oh, that's going to have, going to have to go in through the passenger door. But uh, went in through the driver's door, steering wheel on, literally just tilted it back. So the front legs were like under the dashboard, slid in with the front feet between the gear stick and the dashboard and we're in. Then it was just a case of getting it up and like wangling it back. Um, I did want to keep the rear door cards, but I don't think I'm going to be able to I'll have a look. Uh, but yeah, mega happy with that. All I need to do now is pull it back out because I've got a uh, something I just need to clearance. Just pull it forward a little bit and um, drill some holes, bolt it in, and all it does, if I can find the plates, drill some holes in the body, and they just sandwich the body of the car. They're the front ones. They're the rear ones. Um, so yeah, it went in a lot easier than I expected. Um, without my mate Rob, would not have got anywhere near. So yeah, cheers Rob. I'll, uh, I'll keep going. Uh, we're in the garage out of the wind because it is uh, picking up a little bit and getting pretty chilly. Uh, but... Fronts are bolted in on both sides. Um, we've got the rear arch liner out. So we can get to back of all this. Just need to drill some holes and uh, bolt some plates in. Right, that's the cage bolted in. Um, there's no bolts in that foot at the minute. But uh, all the holes have been drilled, all the plates fit, all the bolts tighten up. So all I'm going to do now is mask the holes off from the inside. Bit of paint, just to protect the holes. Then I'll leave the cage set overnight, roughly where it is now with no bolts in it. Um, and when the paint's dried, it should be a simple matter of uh, bolting it all up. And going back to the list, it's just bolting the wheels on, took some brake fluid for it, and I think we're track ready. So we'll uh, probably pick up this up in the morning. Right, it's the next morning. We are out with the car. The cage is still, again, sorry for the wind, the cage is still exactly where I left it. Um, so what I've done, put the trickle charger on the battery because I left uh, the ignition off on most of yesterday. So that's full bar. Um, the job today is to bolt the backing plates on, which I painted yesterday, and then that's the caging. Then need to put the interior back together. I don't think I'm going to run the door cards, the rear door cards. I just don't think they're going to fit. But uh, I'll have a look at that on a later date. Um, but the rest of the interior can go in, fire extinguisher mount can go in, and uh, and we're good to go. It's in. It's bolted in, all four corners. Uh, everything underneath painted, the arch line is back in, seats are back in, harness is back in, as much of the interior is back in as I can physically get in, um, I don't, can't get the door cards in, I quick go, but, mm. um, just need to tidy up, get my new wheels on, take it for a blast. Right, we're not on the garage, we've done a little road test because the car is complete. Uh, I'll spin the camera around and uh, quick walk around it. First thing you'll notice, no wheels are on. And they look awesome, if I may say so myself. Beautiful. Cages in, all bolted in, looking lovely. And if we pop the boot, making it on my coat, the, uh, the interior is complete. Obviously the harness around the harness bars, all bolted in, looking fantastic. And then, the seats are in, harness is in, some tools on me, just because uh, took it for a test drive. And, um, and just in case we need to tweak any wheel nuts or anything. But yeah, mega happy with that. Looks absolutely fantastic. I had a quick blast out to Blighton Park. Um, I met a man on track there, and uh, I wanted to see how he got on. Is he freshly built M346? So yeah, um, car's done. This has probably been a bit of a longer video, so if you're still here, thanks for watching. Hopefully we'll have some more content for you soon. Um, the only thing I've not put in is I the fire extinguisher, because the actual extinguisher I've got has not got a bracket, and it's a bit pointless really, so it's just two bolts, not a big job to do at a later date. But anyway, um, 
there's the car thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one